Good day, kind folks, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everyone is doing good today, wherever you are in the world. Um, yes, as you can see here, this will be a video response. Um, as usual, I'm going to read this 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 uh, question, and then I'm going to give my response. So it's pretty lengthy, but uh, I think it's worth it. This is a very good um, question here. So, all right, let's get to it. So. Hey man, how's it going? I've been away from studying Japanese for so long as I was busy with school and work, and because I wanted wanted work, I wanted to work on my Hebrew fluency. Anyway, today I decided to go back to Japanese and kind of continue where I left off. But going back to Japanese made me remember the old problems I used to face when I was studying it two years ago. I tried to come back to it using a method similar to your FLR. Where I had prepared, I would prepare sentences with keywords, and and I would send them to a native speaker to translate for me. But the thing is, Japanese speakers speak very differently from the standard language that we see in books, in terms of structure. That is, so when I got my translations, I honestly couldn't understand the majority of what I asked for, uh, let alone trying to make sentences of my own using what I what I got. So my question to you is. Really, how did you <clears throat> move from the Japanese you see in books, where nearly every sentence ends with the masu, uh, to the Japanese people normally to the uh, to the Japanese people normally speak? Also, how do you overcome the different expression expressions issue? I mean, different languages express things differently, so you are not going to find a one-to-one -one correspondence be between words in any two languages, like like say English and Japanese. Like for example, one of my sentences contained the verb "got fired," but in Jap in the Japanese translation, it was translated as "became unemployed." So, does this mean that Japanese doesn't have a verb meaning "getting fired," or was it just a translation choice? How do you deal with these things exactly? I hope I made my point clear, and thanks in advance. Aisar Aburub. Okay, I think that's your. I uh, hope I say that name. Aisar Aburub. So, this is a very good question. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people face this uh, this problem when starting a language like Japanese, languages like Japanese, Korean, you know, those SOV languages with those different polite styles, uh, different styles of politeness. I think uh, everyone has will have this problem. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm gonna just speak about my experience as I normally like to do. And then just give you some advice or try to give you some advice. So basically the book is Japanese. Um, I think as a beginner it's very important to just focus on that stuff first. Don't worry too much about the um, informalities. Because you're going to get, it's, I mean it's already, excuse me, it's already hard enough that the grammar is difficult. Then you got to deal with um, <clears throat> you got to deal with several things here for Japanese. You got to deal with the grammar, which is SOVs backwards. Um, verb goes in the subject first, object comes next, then the verb at the end. Then you got to deal with three writing systems: hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Okay. Then you got to deal with the, um, the 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 different levels of politeness. And like you said, it's 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 like a completely different language. If you listen to like you go to a formal setting, you listen to Japanese being spoken there versus listening to, you know, going to a park somewhere where high school high school kids or, you know, teenagers are speaking. It's like a completely different language. It is because of the different styles of politeness. So I, I think um, that stuff, you don't worry about it as a beginner. Just focus on the. <clears throat> the 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 you know the formal stuff the masu but masu would, as you will see in a um, formal course and once you reach reach an intermediate level um, then you can start to scrutinize that other stuff and try to make an understanding of um, those different endings so I wouldn't stress out too much about that now um, like I said I was gonna say talk, tell you about my experience like when I first started learning Japanese I I mean, I was confused because, first of all, the the grammar, and um, I had a hard time. I had a hard time staying motivated because the uh, it was the grammar is so overwhelming. You know, um, starting with Chinese first and then going to Japanese is so different. Uh, so I I studied. You know, I started learning phrases, and you know, um, and then I had stopped for a little bit, and then I picked it back up because I was meeting more Japanese people. So 
um, at that time, I just told myself not to worry too much about the grammar, just kind of internalize everything, just use the stuff with the native speaker. Um, and then when, um, with time, I will become accustomed to this this grammar and all this other stuff. So I did that. And um, yeah, it was like uh, I think it was over a year, near two years, about two years. I, 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 I studied Japanese and then I started becoming comfortable with um you know with the language getting to that that intermediate stage um and then I um went out and got some grammar books and then I started spending a lot of time in chat rooms you know I started spending a lot of time in chat rooms and this is where I really um became comfortable with with those different those those informalities um a lot of stuff started to make more sense to me so I think once you reach like at least an intermediate level, I think what you need to do is find a native. I can't stress that enough. You need to find some natives. And, um, you know, I, I like chat rooms, too, because they always use a lot of jargons and slang. You know, um, you need to do stuff like that and take notes. So, you know, back to my experience, I used to take notes, a lot of notes. I had a note, literally had a notepad full of Japanese notes. And then I would... Um, I will ask my Japanese friend um, about this stuff. Say, so what does this mean? Like, why do they put this, you know, put this here at the end? He would tell me, oh, that's slang. You know, he he would tell me, well, it's the same meaning as this, but it's just a less formal way of saying it. So that helped out. So basically mimicking, just copying off the, you know, the Japanese people. Even my friend, he used to, when, when, we, when we spoke with each other, um, VI, AOL, or MSN Messenger, he would type like some um, not so formal Japanese. He would use like those breaking off the endings. And I'm like, man, what is this? And then I would just take note of that and I would use it. Um, I would use it on someone else or use it back on him. And I just, you know, like I said, over time, you just get used to it. So the main thing you need to do is just as a beginner, um, you need to just focus on just go out work through a course where I, uh, well, I want to say teach yourself. Well, the content is good, but we have an issue when it comes to writing Genki series or, you know, get get um, Aussie meal and work through the first book. Just kind of work through a formal course, get comfortable with the basics. You fully understand the Masu and all the other stuff and then start worrying about the informal stuff. OK. So I will do that as a beginner. All right. Then I will um, make friends with a native speaker and then find places to hang out chat rooms where you can actually see Japanese being typed and see how they break words up. And, then you know, just take notes and ask questions. So that's really the only way, you know, there's there's really nothing you could do at the beginning stages. You don't want to just hop right into that informality stuff as a beginner and then you don't understand how to use masu and all the you know all the formal things it's just not a good idea so that's my advice to you um when it comes to that moving from the book stuff to the actual colloquialisms and whatnot so that is that so um i'm sure a lot of people out there study japanese so definitely um you guys you guys watching this give some advice feedback what, what he can do but that's my feedback that's what i would do if i was in, if, if, if i was him so um so the next thing you asked me was about the translation and this is something that was really awkward for me um as well like japanese they don't say they, they there are certain things that we say like there are things that we say in english that japanese people just won't say i mean they will say it but it's kind of worded differently you can't like directly translate it um so you ask about fire they actually do have a word for fire and they like you know they have this vocabulary but they may not translate it in the way that we would in English. It may be just, it may be easier, it may be simpler. You're like, wow, that's it? You know, you just translate like that. But this is a big problem that I had as well in, um, when learning Japanese. And um, to be honest, I mean, I've been, you know, I have a lot of experience with Japanese. I still occasionally make this, um, I don't want to call it a mistake, but it's it's like I will translate. There are certain things I translate, but they're not they they they'll come out unnatural. A Japanese person would tell me that, oh, okay, that's you know that's not natural. 
uh, we normally say it like this. And then I was like, wow, really? That's it? I didn't have to use all that? So I think the most important thing in this respect is the exposure. You need to expose yourself to a lot of Japanese. You can do that by, you know, reading a lot, um, speaking with Japanese people very often. Um, but I would definitely go for the reading. Just expose yourself to a lot of the reading so you can kind of get so you can get used to how they translate things bilingual books i think definitely um once you get to that level look into getting bilingual books and just uh read those for 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 a long time until you start you know to get um accustomed to their translation the way they translate things so um yeah it's it's pretty awkward and um it's just something that you have to get used to through time so that is my advice so as far as the book stuff um if you're a beginner just you know focus on that go through a formal course learn the masu and get a great understanding of that and then move on try to worry about the informalities um hook up with some japanese people find some places to hang out at chat rooms whatever um and that's it that's what you need to do and then as far as the um the translation how to become accustomed to that just exposure you just have to expose yourself to a lot of japanese material that's the only solution um, to that so um, yeah that is it like I said if you guys have any suggestions for our friend Abu Rub here Aisad, um, you can post a video response or just leave it you know a message in the comment area uh, for him I'm going to send him this message ex um, as soon as it uploads to YouTube so yeah man I hope I um I hope this helped you out um, it is I mean it is what it is with Japanese is is I mean, what can I say? It's a tough language. It's a lot of things you have to learn and be aware of. But I tell you, once you get through it, you learn all that stuff and it becomes second nature. It's, it's, a, it's a hell of an achievement, man. You'll feel proud. So hopefully you can get back into Japanese and, and stay consistent with it and um, um, eventually get to a level to where you have, you know, um, commu great communication skills. So that is it. I'm going to end this video. So um, like I said, if you guys have any questions or whatever um, or suggestions for our friend here, make a video response or just make it in the comment area. All righty. That is it. Thanks for viewing.